let's stay with that because we're joined by Professor Alan Ahern, who's director of the Whitaker Institute at NUI Galway. Thanks very much indeed, Alan, for joining us on the programme. I want to focus just first of all on one aspect of uh, these, a number of reports today in relation to what's going on in the property market. The OECD warning today of a bubble. They say a bubble is evident already in what's going on in terms of house price uh, inflation and raising a red flag uh, about that. Is that something, have they got it right? Is it something we should be concerned about? We certainly have a big problem in the housing market and the house prices are rising rapidly. But I think they're wrong to call it a bubble. It's not the, like the bubble or, that we saw back in the 2000s. Um, because if you look at uh, what happened in the 2000s, we had massive increases in credit that was fueling massive increases in house prices. We don't see those big increases in credit at the moment. And we know, for example, that uh, recently the loan-to-value ratios and um, for first-time buyers is about 80%. That is, the borrowers are putting down, on average, about a 20% deposit. Mm -hmm. Back in the, in the bubble years, there was hardly any deposit being put down, and there were times when the loans exceeded the actual value of the house. We know that uh, recently that borrowers are getting loans ab on average about three times their income. Again, go back to the 2004, 5, 6, the bubble years, that was 8 nine, ten times their income. So we're just not in the same place. We have a problem. There's a dysfunction in the housing market, but it's a different problem. It's a different dysfunction. So, I mean, the central bank, we know, people will be aware, introduced a number of restrictions some years ago, and that, that you're arguing, I presume, has succeeded in, in, in restricting credit availability, but presumably then it's, it's, it's cash, is it? It's just money available, and people are looking for a home for it, and that's what's driving this, uh, uh, this inflation. Well, really what's happening is that we have supply constraints. There is a, a demand, a big demand, and a growing demand for housing. Um, the economy is growing, incomes are growing, unemployment is falling to, uh, almost, uh, to, to close to, to full employment levels. So people have money in the pockets, and they're increasing the demand for accommodation. Of course, demographics are driving demand for housing. But we have big problems on the supply, so that's the problem. It's a supply constraint. The supply of housing, of new housing, is gummed up. Now, I guess the good news is that it looks like it's beginning to ease up a bit. It looks like there is new activity and more activity in new house building. But of course, it took a long time to get going, and it's a fairly slow and sluggish response. So we're going to have this problem of excess demand or um, not enough supply of housing for quite a few more years to come. And on the other side of the coin, I think it's the OECD, they're also warning that if, if, if you start to ramp up uh, construction um, and outpace the capacity of the, 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 the construction industry to deliver, then the risk of that is overheating that sector, perhaps causing wider overheating in the economy and inflation in terms of wages and so on. Well, that was the Fiscal Advisory Council. They, they pointed out that the solution to the housing problem, extra supply, creates its own set of challenges because uh, if you have a big increase in housing construction over the next few years, which would be welcome, that's what we need, that's going to create a lot of jobs and add a lot of extra money into the economy. And the economy is approaching full employment. I mean, the current trends, we're going to have full employment in the economy within the next 18 months. So what they're pointing out, and I think um, uh, correctly, is that the government, our policymakers, don't want to add any extra fuel to the economy over the next few years if we're approaching full employment and if we have this other sector, housing, that's about to ramp up. And that's really a warning about keeping budgetary policy conservative, and that is, it means that we don't want to see, and we shouldn't see, for the sake of the economy, big increases in government spending expenditure, uh, and we may not, and it may indeed have implications for the public sector pay increases that are going on. It means budgetary policy. We don't want that adding additional fuel to economy where there are risks of overheating over the next few years. All right, Professor Alan Hearn in Galway, thanks for talking to us. A ceremony has taken